we've been hearing a lot of somewhat um, questionable discussions around copper, zinc, copper, zinc ratios, artificial copper, bioidentical copper, blah, 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 blah. So listen, I, I felt I really just kind of need to deliver a message here. And this comes from, you know, not our simple personal perspective, but you know, all of our experience, not to mention the research that was done more than four decades ago. Okay. But there are a lot of new kids on the block who are kind of saying some things that really don't wash very well. So let's kind of jump right to it. Okay. First of all, I want you guys to stop, especially undermethylated people out there, I want you to stop worrying about copper zinc ratios. The whole point is not to get a one to one number. It doesn't work that way. You've got to think about copper and zinc as independent entities. The zinc has to be treated. The copper's got to be treated. And especially you doctors out there, if you're paying attention to this, stop chasing numbers. Numbers are not people. People are people. All sorts of variables come into play. So number one thing, stop worrying about copper zinc ratios. Okay. Now, number two, let's talk about copper. All right. If we're talking about a mental health issue, and you don't like using that term, but mental health, we're not talking about people who are just fine out there and their lives are wonderful, da da da. If you've got anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, ADHD, do not take copper. Copper is a direct converter of that lovely neurotransmitter we call dopamine, and it turns it straight into adrenaline. Now what happens when you've got adrenaline on the rise? You can get a rapid heartbeat, you can get increased anxiety, you can get panic, you can get depression. I kid you not, one really true story was we got a call from somebody who used to be a patient of ours on the East Coast, and we got a call from her from the emergency room. She found a so-called practitioner out there who told her that you know zinc and copper needed to be in a one-to-one -one ratio, and her, her um, zinc was very high, so she gave her 50 milligrams of copper. And I'm not kidding you. She ended up in the emergency room with panic disorder. Okay. We had a good conversation, told her what to do, and so forth. But do not take copper. Don't even take the slightest amount of copper if you've got anxiety, depression. It will have a negative effect. Please bear with us. If you've got a question about the use of copper, give us a call. Okay, That's the best way to do this. But for the most part, the answer is do not do it. There isn't a single circumstance where I can tell you that we've given anyone copper. It is not a good idea because our world is the world of mental health. So for us, it's simply not a good thought, okay? So now let's talk for a minute about analyses of copper. So there's another concept out there, because I've actually seen this, where people are saying, well, you know, you need to do a hair analysis in order to determine if your copper levels are high. And if you see high copper in the hair, well, then you definitely have got copper toxicity. Folks, that could be so much farther from the truth. Now, many of you have um, hair. You're very well endowed, something that I'm a little bit challenged with right now. But hair is basically a toxic removal agent. Just because you've got high levels of a substance like copper in your hair, doesn't mean that you have high levels of copper inside. That's where the, the blood testing comes into play. We've seen this so many times it's not even funny. Hair analysis can show very little copper, first of all, yet when you do an internal test, a blood test, you can be extremely copper toxic. Let's flip it around. We've also seen where you've got tons of copper in a hair analysis. And then when you do the internal serum copper, it's actually normal. What does that mean? It means your body is efficient at getting rid of the copper. Not that you're copper toxic. And no, you cannot do a urinary challenge test. That's like an artificial test that squeezes copper and other elements out of your body through the urine, as opposed to what you really have floating around in the bloodstream. These are two very different things. Okay, I'm talking about this because, first of all, these other tests, if you look at them, you can get the wrong diagnosis and you wonder why you're not being, uh, why you're not feeling better after you've been treated. Okay, so please be considerate. These are not the right tests. Use the appropriate testing, which is typically a serum copper test, 
from the blood okay, in order to determine your level of copper toxicity. And please do not try treating yourselves at home. But the number one thing I want to say is don't take copper. Don't let anyone out there tell you you need to take copper. Those people don't know what they're talking about. Okay? How do we know? Because after that happens, folks, we're getting phone calls on how do we fix this issue that somebody else caused. The key here is exercise some level of circumspection. Please understand, again, copper is an agent that can take your calm neurotransmitters and make them the neurotransmitters that produce anxiety, depression, panic, severe mood swings, anger, and rage. That's not what you want in your life. Okay? So, I think I've kind of shared with you very quickly some of the, uh, the, the myths that are out there, some of the really wrong things that are being perpetrated on the internet, because I've seen them. And I think this gives you a better idea, at least I hope it does. If you have any other con uh, confusion going on, feel free to give us a call. Send us an email to your nurse, or in general, if you've got a question, you know, send it to the front desk. We'll be more than happy to take a look at it. And we will have that conversation. I don't want your situation to move in the wrong direction. Okay? Copper is not your friend. Now, there are some times where copper is necessary, and that's what you get through the diet, but you don't supplement with it. Okay? And most of you folks who are, who are eating high copper foods, like avocados, like kale, like spinach, like broccoli, we see your copper levels rising. We can see it. Copper from copper pipes, copper from swimming pools, and above all else, copper supplementation. Just remember, it's not a good idea. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. All right? Thank you for bearing with me. Dr. Mensa from Mensa Medical. We're doing our best to take care of you. Please let us help you. Thank you.